A little bit of a thanks here to BBS Robski. He uh, said that I got the P uh, pulse with modulation of the duty cycle. Uh, asked about face, and uh, yeah, he's right. The uh, the thing is pulled to ground because the ECU is uh, controlling the uh, the ground circuit. So just an apology there for the people who did actually watch this video earlier. I got it round the wrong way, so this video has now been um, re-edited. <laughs> Okay, hello, welcome back to the Vehicle Repair Toolbox videos. What I have presenting uh, to you here is the uh, Common Rail Diesel System for the uh, Defender Puma 2.2. Okay, you can see that very clearly here. Now, what we're interested in is uh, the high pressure pump. Basically, um, this is uh, supplying the uh, Common Rail with... Uh, pressurized diesel okay unlike the old 300 tdis in the land rovers and basically what we're interested in is the electrical connections the vcv valve or the volume control valve which is number three here and uh, it's been known as mprop valve as well okay so um there's an electrical connection to it which is important so let's read this bit here okay the uh, vcv in the uh, high pressure fuel pump is controlled by the ecm uh, regulates this uh, supply to the pumping elements depending on the pressure in the rail. This ensures that the delivery uh, from the pump matches the requirements of the engine. When the engine is at idle speed, pump output pressure is about 220 to 250 bar um, range and uh, typical driving speed, the pump output pressure is 1300-1600 a bar. So looking at another part of the manual, fuel charging system, it actually says this is a metering valve and you'll see that there's uh, the connector here on the valve and it's got one wire. Now I wouldn't trust these diagrams. Uh, basically it's uh, telling you how to remove the control valve and put it back in. It's really, really fiddly. I've done one of these and they're hard to get at. Um, seriously, uh, you can test them easily though. Uh, one thing I will say if you're changing one of these uh, valves ever, that you're going to have to make sure that you've got a scanner and uh, set it to uh, learn because once you've changed over a, uh, a valve or even injectors, then you need to go into the system a pump learn again. Okay, uh, you can do this on snap on scanners, it's uh, quite easy to do, or get Land Rover to do it. If not, it um, doesn't run very well. Right, so I just want to show you the connector um, C3356, which is on the left-hand side of the engine, valve control fuel volume, so the name's changed again, and uh, you've got C3356 just down here. You can't really see it, but just to confirm that it's got actually two wires in it, cavity is the um, connector cavities, one and two, which is where the pins are. CSA, I'll just bring this in a bit, CSA is not the... Uh, what you think it is, is actually the uh, size of the wire, okay. Um, so they're the same size, PN and uh, U0, or UO, they're the colours. And uh, CCT, um, yeah, we don't really need to know about that, but destination is where the wires and where the connectors will be, or the next connectors will be in line on the, on the wiring, okay. So uh, this uh, library, electrical library, gives you uh, connector information. It's actually quite vital. Sometimes it will give you uh, left-hand drive and right-hand drive variants. This case has just repeated itself. There is also a uh, fuel temperature sensor in the high-pressure pump, which allows the ECM to monitor the temperature of the fuel delivered from the fuel tank. Yeah, so that's that. You can read the manual if you wish to. There is also on the Land Rover Defender Workshop Manual a very comprehensive list of fault codes or DTCs. Um, you can literally type in VCV and it will come up with these, okay? Right, so uh, the Workshop Manual Electrical uh, Wiring Diagrams, always a must. It's on in a separate book in the uh, Land Rover case. Um, basically what we have here, we have the ECM and uh, we can see the VCV connection, okay, and they changed the name here, valve control fuel volume, okay, this is something you've got to be aware of, they, they just change the goalpost when they want to, okay, so we have a, uh, what is that, purple and uh, 
orange wire and then we have the volume control valve and then we have a wire which is uh, purple and brown okay and that goes off to sheet one okay so this has two wires on this connector that has been shown and uh, what I'm going to look at now I'm just going to find the volume control valve again or the valve can control fuel volume and you can see it's got a power supply okay so uh, we have the connector C3356 pin 1 um, that goes to um, a uh, connector block here which is probably in the bulkhead somewhere okay and then it goes off it has a power supply through another connector and then we have a fuse which is a 5 amp fuse okay and following it up in the junction box we will see that it is also connected to another power line which will be uh, ignition live okay uh, which is brown and orange. You won't go any further than that, but uh, if it's got no power, then you'd have to check fuses, obviously. Yeah, so uh, wiring diagrams are always handy. You also have the uh, uh, connector diagram as well, show you where all these are, which is, uh, which is a bonus at times, okay? The conclusion from looking at the wiring diagram, it has a 12 volt feed, and then the computer controls the ground, which means the, the valve is pulled to ground on the pulse width modulation when we go to test it. Okay, so here we have the high pressure pump on this specific vehicle. And uh, number three is the VCV, volume control valve, or it's called a metering valve, or even an improp, depending on uh, what vehicles you're working on. And number five is the temperature sender. Okay, so you can see the whole of the high pressure pump here. Um, you can do an electrical test um, for power supply and also the signal. Now, the uh, signal wire which goes to the ECM, I, uh, I had to check on a vehicle to see what it would be. And this was a Peugeot uh, 406, which I'm gonna show you. And it comes up with the duty cycle. And this basically is used to um, either open and hold uh, a solenoid or close it or to keep a motor in a certain position depending on the duty cycle is how much it will be open or how much it will be closed. The duty cycle is uh, fairly high speed and uh, instead of using a resistor in line um, to uh, like a variable resistor where you can bring up the uh, current to make a motor go quicker for instance this actually uh, is uh, rapid switching on and off. So we know that the ECU will pull this to ground and that will be the on part of the uh, switching cycle and the off part will be at 12 volts. So just remember this and now I'll give you a, uh, uh, an explanation of the waveform. So we'll look at what point one. This is the point on the waveform which shows the switched off period and is measured as a percentage of the total on off period. Number two, this is the point on the waveform where the quality control valve is switched on and opens. Point three, this is the point on the waveform which shows the switched on period and is measured as a percentage of the total on off period. Number four, this is the point on the waveform where the quality control valve is switched off and closes. The textbook's definition here is uh, the quality control valve is often supplied with the system battery voltage and the earth circuit is then duty cycled to regulate the flow of diesel. Reference here is from Graham Stokes' book Automotive Oscilloscopes Waveform Analysis, which is a very good book, which I would recommend if you're getting into oscilloscopes or even if you, uh, you know them, then uh, it's uh, worth reading. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to show you the uh, signal that I'm getting out of the uh, MPROP valve. Okay, and it's a good signal on this Peugeot. And then I'm also going to show you the injector uh, signature, which is uh, just for just for interest sake. Uh, some of you guys probably already know about oscilloscopes, know what's going on. Other you guys can just watch and uh, see what's involved. Uh, before you lynch me, I've put a picture up of a Freelander 2002. The uh, signal pattern from the injector is exactly the same as the Peugeot we're looking at. So uh, that's my get out clause. Okay, so what I have on here is a duty cycle signal for the uh, metering valve on the high pressure pump on this Peugeot. And uh, what you see here is the amount of time that it's on, the amount of time it's off, okay? 20 volt scale, 
it's uh, on battery voltage or just a little bit higher it's actually reading 15.91 okay so time frame take it down to 10 milliseconds maybe okay um, or even less than that right so basically if I put a trigger in here yeah trigger bang just keep it stable keep it in one place okay so what it shows is the amount of time there's voltage to and then it switches off and back on again. All right. If I uh, accelerate this, it won't change much, but the on time and the off time will make a difference, it will change. So uh, luckily it's got an accelerator. You see that expand the slightly? Okay, so what you'll notice, the uh, on time uh, has increased compared to the off time, and uh, this means that the valve is opening more. You see that expand the slightly? Okay, so it doesn't move that much. What I'm looking for, I'm just showing you, I know this car's good, it's uh, metering all right, not a problem, okay. Basically what they used to call it is an M-prop valve um, on DAFs, okay, um, different names, different vehicles. But yeah, basically on the back of the hot pressure pump you've got a metering valve. Okay. Um, we can go around and check all the sensors and valves on this if we want to. Um, all do good. But this vehicles are running quite nicely, so I haven't got a problem here at all. Alright, so what I've got here is a Peugeot uh, HDI, which is the year 2000, it has electro uh, solenoid injectors, two wires to it, and I'm running a oscilloscope to it. And what I want to show you is uh, the speed of the injector pulse, if you like. Okay, this is the signal for the injector. I'm running two millivolts, 100 volt scale, and the maximum here is uh, 78 millivolts, uh, 78 volts, sorry. Right, so if I take this up to one second, you'll see what's happening in one second, yeah? This is the amount of pulses that's going in on one injector, yeah? Okay, so I'll take that back. What I want to do, the main thing is to uh, just check the injectors. Hang on, one millisecond, it'll go out of range, two milliseconds. Right, so I have a trigger here to keep it stable. Hang on, just reset itself. Yeah, that's not good. I'll just move that out a bit more. Okay. So this trigger enables us to uh, see the signal well. Okay. If you read the engine, the signal frequency, the signal frequencies will increase, and the signature will change as well. Okay. So if you see here, I'm on injector number three. I move this over. It's pretty obvious because the wiring uh, for this is coloured, and uh, the signal one I want on number one is coloured. Yeah. So it's the same thing again. I've got the same signature. All right. And then number one. I think I've missed that one. Have I got that? Yeah, I've got contact on that one. So just have a look quick, look at this. Alright. What we have here, it's the same signature, alright? The injectors are acting the same way. Go on to number four. These T pins are pretty good. I see uh, Scanner Danny using these, I thought I'll get some of these. Some people use paper clips. Um, Two things are much sturdier. So again, I've got the same signal. Okay. So we're looking at down here again. This is on number four, which is the same as number three, two, and number one. Okay. I just started on number on uh, injector number three. Oh, you can't really see that. This is the problem with these screens. You get a sun glare on them. It's not very good. So you get the idea what we're looking at here. Some of the multimeter couldn't do. However, you can do a DC voltage test with this. Okay, so uh, I'm not cheating here. What I'll show you, guided component tests on this machine. 
We're looking for Peugeot, and this is right down the bottom of the list. 99. 99, we're looking for a 406 um, diesel. Okay, right, so engine. And then we have a list of test procedures if we want them. I want to look at the injector. Okay, um, you get component information with this. You also get a DC voltage test and then a signature test. Okay, and the signature test is the one that will uh, show the signature of the uh, injector. All right. Uh, it tells you what to do, where to, to pin out, which is brilliant, okay? You uh, sort of know after a while what to do. So, uh, just get the settings up here, right? And what we have, you can see, without getting a glare on the, the screen here, this is the most annoying thing, is, uh, okay, live 19.2. I don't know what that means, but basically the maximum here is 78, okay? So you can see on the scale here, on the voltage scale, yeah, we're about 78 volts. It's fairly consistent there, yeah. and that'll drop down to uh, minimum minus um, 3.6 of a volt. Okay, it's on a 100 volt scale on this, so we can actually see it. Yeah. If we change the scale to uh, 200 volts, for instance, you can see the signal suddenly changes the size, but the scales will be the same. And reading down here, you can see what it is. Okay. We'll put it back onto uh, 100 volts. Yeah. If I put it on to 50 volts, for instance, that's already off the screen. Yeah. We go on to 100 volts, and away you go. I can move this line up or down. Depends. In, depends whether you've got two multimeters or not. Okay. So yeah, two milliseconds. I don't think it'll go down to one millisecond. Yes, it does. Okay, yeah, we won't do that. We'll go down to one millisecond on this machine. You can see what the signal is. If, for instance, we wanted to see more happening, we can then just go up the time scale. Okay, that's 50 milliseconds. All right. And uh, if I move this trigger across, okay, reset itself. Yeah, you can see the injection cycles happening, and that's. Um, within a 50 millisecond range. What's interesting here, I have this on a 500, 500 millisecond scale, all right? And this vehicle's at idling. You watch when I accelerate. All right. Signal increases, then it cuts out completely, cuts the injectors, till it comes back to idle, the rest come back to idle. Yeah, see that? 